So we think that health and wellbeing is important to education and the curriculum in general because it's a skills development. Um, pupils aren't necessarily just trained in history, maths, English or whatever. They are trained to be life to be citizens of the our world we live in. So through PSE and through teaching them wellbeing and the health, especially obesity, and smoking and drug policies and usage, we think we're educating them to become healthy and informed citizens. Um, this is also important because of the Donaldson curriculum. Um, so one of Donaldson's four purposes is for pupils to be ethical citizens and we think that PSE and wellbeing is really important to the curriculum. Data is probably one of the most significant things you can include when teaching any subject. It allows you to fully evidence a point. For example, with the, with the healthy, healthy human sort of topic, with the healthy diet exercise, we've honed in on data from two sources, from food labels and from calorific intake of, of countries provided by their governments or councils. Using this data, we can draw comparisons that allow us to really inform our students on on how to be healthy, on the healthiest lifestyle for them, which is probably one of the least contrived things that we can teach a student in, in school. And for that, I believe that data is a vital part of the education process. Health and wellbeing, I believe, is a very current topic, particularly within Wales and the UK. Without good health and a good wellbeing, it's going to have a drastic impact on not only the economy, but how the country can develop, on our NHS, the amount of funding we have to put into it, and this is why I believe that it's something crucial that we need to start developing within school. Our pupils need to be aware of diet, what a bad diet can lead to, what the impact of drugs can be, legal highs that are quite currently common on the high street to a certain extent. Overall, I think that health and well-being should have priority within schools as it's a very important thing going forward. I think it's really important to use data when you're teaching health and wellbeing because rather than just giving your own opinions or people thinking that you're giving your own opinions, you've got data and proof to back up what you're saying um, so the cause is less of a debate. Also though, it's important to show that data can often be misleading or twisted to argue certain points of view. So it's important to get the children to see that maybe for example, if you said 40% of children in a particular area was obese, that doesn't mean that every single child is going to feel that way or f feel like that was a true representation of where they're from. I think that health and well-being is important because it encourages emotional resilience, confidence, and an ability to navigate themselves in a world so that they can make well-informed decisions. Um, back to emotional resilience, I think that it ensures pupils are also emotionally intelligent to know that they can make mistakes and that it's what they do with those mistakes and how they bounce back that matters. Um, overarch overall, I think that health and well-being is mostly important because it teaches pupils to be you know, emphatic, open-minded and well-informed in a society, in a world that appears to be more apathetic and full of alternative facts. Through teaching health and wellbeing, it should have a massive impact on our classrooms and within every single school. Um, it should enc encourage children to talk openly about lots of different issues, um, such as mental health, which is a big issue within our Welsh schools nowadays. It will also ensure that children feel um, at ease in answering questions not just in health and well-being, but in all subjects, even maths, where the incorrect answer can sometimes be seen as wrong. My achlys and hanfodol bod y disgyblion yn dysgu yn yn ysgolion. Ac ysbyn nhw'n gweld dylanwad smygu a effaith smygu a'r teledu. Ond trwy wylio ffilmau fel X-Men, am nhw'n gweld Wolverine, a pobl fel na yn smygu, maen nhw'n gweld y fel rhywbeth cool. Ond, mae dyblygiad yn um, advertisements ar smygu di newid dros amser. Am nhw'n dechrau gweld yr effaith a pa mor wael a um, newidiol ma smygu. Am nhw'n bwysig bod nhw'n gweld hwn, achos er bod nhw'n cael y negydd hwn ar adfeds ar y teledu, maen nhw'n dal yn mynd i wylio'r ffilmiau, a maen nhw'n dal yn gweld problem smygu. So os ni'n dangos nhw y cyfreithiau, y ffeithiau ar y corff, a y ffordd mae fy newid, nid yn unig tod, um, iechyd nhw, ond y ffordd mae fy newid finances hefyd, maen bwysig bod nhw'n gweld, a maen nhw'n dysgu wedyn i fod yn gall a I need pen to be able to cover and risk all.
Uh, health and wellbeing education um, is a highly viable and important part of students' education. With Donaldson's new directives of being a healthy, confident individual and an ethically informed citizen, combining these to make someone fully aware of the ramifications of mental health and awareness in our society, teachers being able to inform their students will be highly beneficial and being more aware of it and imparting it to them in a society and a classroom where they can learn effectively is the most beneficial thing we can do. As an English teacher, uh, we thought it would be most effective to teach health and wellbeing through the subject because with Donaldson it's about teaching across the curriculum, not just isolating areas of learning. Um, and data really fits into that by ensuring that pupils know how to effectively read and handle data. So for we thought it would be most effective to put it all into a sheet for them and then for them to read and select the most relevant pieces of data to support their ideas about health and well-being. It's important that they're aware of the data because um, in the society we live in, you often see billboards with percentages or fractions about how many people are suffering with mental illness, so it's important that they can understand and interpret that and use that to inform their everyday decisions about mental health and well-being. Health and wellbeing is extremely important um, within schools. With over half of the country participating in the survey saying that they don't participate in any exercise at all whatsoever. Um, and just a quarter of the nation participating in an hour a week of exercise. Um, I think teaching health and wellbeing in schools will help to develop healthier pupils and a healthier nation as a whole. Um, and I think this is extremely important as obe obesity rates are at an all time high. Um, so teaching it in schools and teaching it early is really, really important to develop a healthier nation. I think it's really important that we teach health and wellbeing in schools because we need to be preparing pupils and children to go into the world, not just to know a lot of academic facts, although obviously I think that's important being a teacher. We have to prepare them for the real world, for employment, for social issues that they're going to come across in their lives. Increasingly, children are having to make harder decisions at a younger age. I know that in our group we looked at um, the ab abuse of drugs and alcohol, and increasingly that's something that children are coming into contact with more and more frequently. So it's really important that they're aware of all the facts, that they're able to make the right decisions, and this will lead to a healthier society and a society in which people are better informed, which can only be a positive thing. I think data in the form of infographics is important to show pupils because of the fact that um, it's more tangible and authentic, because if not, pupils will just see it and not visualise what it actually could mean. And also, it can improve their data skills and numeracy skills, um, as they'll be able to interpret and analyse the um, and do more research on the data. The uh, desired impact of health and social education for children is ultimately that we create happier people. So as educators, we have to go into school, we have to give these children the ability to function in society. But ultimately, we have to focus on them as individuals. And with the current um, accessibility to data, to social media, there's a lot of pressures on young people at the moment. Our particular group focused on the pressure of sexting and the way that peer pressure makes children feel that they're forced to become engaged in any kind of sexual activity at a younger age. And we're trying to show children that that's not necessarily the case. We are trying to show them ways that they can uh, combat this, ways they can come across um, in a way that doesn't make them get picked on and bullied for not wanting to. We're trying to create more resilient individuals show them how to deal with things, how to not be pressured. And ultimately, that will create um, a happier environment. For the very nature of having to teach issues like that, you have to create a safe environment in your classroom in which pupils feel that they can talk to you. And that would bleed into the whole school. So the more that children talk about issues like this, the safer environment the school becomes. Because children feel that they can go to teachers more, access those teachers more, talk to them about these issues. And ultimately, that means things like bullying will stop. 
bullying will lessen because children understand how to interact with their peers, they understand what appropriate relationships are, they understand how to cope with pressures of being a young person in a school, not just the academic pressure that they're under, but the personal pressure that they're under. And then that ultimately feeds into society. We'll be creating children who will be happier, they will know how to cope with hardships of life, they will know how to be nice to someone, ultimately, and that will feed into them and into the society around us as, we, as they get older and they leave school, and they'll understand how to interact with the world in a more positive and meaningful way. I think that um, teaching health and wellbeing as part of the curriculum is really important to educate um, the next generation and to make them happy and all-rounded students and citizens of the world. Well, when we were searching for the data to include in our lesson, we found some um, variations. So some of the data was represented at only like 15, 20% to do with student sexting and showing inappropriate images to their friends and then some of the other data was including how many girls had actually sent these images and it came up at 70% so we decided to include the 70% data in our lesson because we felt it would have more impact on them for them to see how serious the issue was. So I think the impact of teaching children about these issues is that firstly they know that they've got a sympathetic ear in school if you're prepared to talk about it in the classroom then they know that if they have an issue they can come to the teachers um, but I think more importantly it puts the impetus on teachers to have an understanding of the things that are affecting children in their day-to-day -day lives and it forces us to acknowledge what's happening to them and what could be having a negative impact on, on their health and well-being and in turn having a, a, a negative impact on their learning experience.